You're on Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report. I'm Amy Goodman with Juan Gonzalez. We turn now to a major development here in New York in the push for police accountability. Governor Andrew Cuomo has announced plans to appoint a special prosecutor to investigate police killings of unarmed civilians. On Wednesday, Cuomo appointed New York Attorney General Eric Schneiderman under a one-year executive order. An executive order that appoints the attorney general as a special prosecutor for any case where a conflict may be perceived. So the attorney general will be a standing prosecutor to handle any case where a law enforcement officer kills an unarmed civilian or kills a civilian and there is a question as to whether or not the civilian is armed and dangerous. Governor Cuomo's action will make New York the first state to institute an independent prosecutor for police killings, a step recommended by President Obama's task force on policing. But it falls short of the demands of some activist groups. The Justice Committee had called for the executive order to cover all police killings and not be limited to just one year. Cuomo's move came a day after mothers of New Yorkers killed by police rallied outside his New York City office, demanding he fulfill his promise to appoint the special prosecutor if state lawmakers did not take action. Well, for more, we're joined by one of those mothers. Um, Gwen Carr is with us. She's the mother of Eric Garner, who died almost exactly a year ago. It was July 17, 2014, after police pulled him to the ground in a chokehold and piled on top of him while he said, I can't breathe, 11 times. A grand jury declined to indict Officer Daniel Pantaleo, who put Garner in the chokehold. The prosecutor in the case, Daniel Donovan, was recently elected to Congress from Staten Island. Garner's death was caught on video by Ramsey Orta who's been arrested repeatedly since Eric Garner's death. Ramsey Orta alleges police harassment. Mrs. Carr was there Wednesday when Governor Cuomo signed his executive order appointing special prosecutor to investigate police killings of unarmed civilians. She's a member of the Justice Committee, which pushed for the measure. We're also joined by Vince Warren, executive director of the Center for Constitutional Rights. We welcome you both to Democracy Now! Gwen Carr, you were there um, when Governor Cuomo made this announcement. Are you satisfied now? Well, pretty much I am, because uh, Governor Cuomo signing the executive order will end inherent fundamental, um, you know, um, areas that exist with the local DAs now, that when a person, a civilian, is killed by police, there seems to be a problem. So now we'll have an independent uh, person to review these killings, which we hope that there'll be no more of. And the issue of it being just for one year, obviously the governor had some limitations in that the state legislature would not pass uh, any kind of legislation. But do you, are you worried that that's such a short time that even investigating one case sometimes could take longer, uh, longer than a year? Well, it's not the, the language in the executive order doesn't read like that anymore. It's not only there's no language in there that says only for one year. It would have to be renewed after a year, which we discuss with the governor. And it, the scope was broadened for the attorney general's office to investigate and, prosec and prosecute more cases that was broadened, you know, once we discussed it with the governor. You met with Governor Cuomo and spoke to him. What did you tell him? Well, the families told him that we are, we wanted him to commit to signing an executive order for a special prosecutor, and he promised the families when we met in April in Albany that if his uh, independent monitor uh, that he was presenting wasn't passed, that he would sign an executive order. And at that time, we tried to make it perfectly clear that we did want it 
for all cases, and we didn't want a one-year limitation, okay? So now, after his uh, independent monitor wasn't passed, we went back to him and we asked him to sign the executive order, which, you know, he had everything prepared, it was read to us, and we had some concerns which we uh, addressed, he addressed, and we asked him to change certain things. And he did. When we went back, it was close to what we had asked for. And, and Michael Warren, why is it, has it historically been so difficult for local prosecutors uh, to move on these cases of uh, uh, police killings? Um, it's been very it's very difficult for for a range of reasons. Um, one of the one of the most important things is that there is an inherent conflict of interest between prosecutors and police officers. They work together all the time. Uh, they investigate cases together. They prosecute cases together. The police collect evidence, and then all of a sudden, if you have a scenario where a police officer is accused of of killing a civilian, those same prosecutors that work with them day in and day out now are charged with um, trying to investigate those cases. And on the local level, politically, personally, that doesn't always work. So we end up with this crazy scenario where if a civilian kills a police officer, you know that that civilian is going to be prosecuted. But if a police officer kills an unarmed civilian, most of us don't have the confidence um, that that's going to be a fair investigation and prosecution. This is a great step in the right direction um, because it inserts the attorney general, this, and our, we have a great attorney general, Eric Schneiderman, into that mix um, so that it takes it out of the hands of the prosecutor to decide whether it's going to be a political play or whether they're actually going to go with the law. And what? my apologies, it's Vince Warren. That's right. Michael. I've been called worse than Michael Warren, yes. though, believe me. <laughs> when Carr, what was your relationship with the prosecutor in Staten Island, um, the prosecutor who ended up becoming a Congress member who um, failed to indict uh, Daniel Pantaleo, the officer who put your son in a chokehold? What was my relationship? Did you ever speak to him? We spoke to him once. Um, while before he formed the grand jury, before anything happened, and just speaking with him, it didn't sound too positive to us. And even before the grand jury was formed, we were trying to get the federal government to take the case, because we felt more confident in the federal government than we felt in the DA taken on the case. And, and your reaction to all this co constant arrest of Ramsey Orta by the police now, time after time, since uh, since the uh, the death of your son? Um, yes. Now, he, he has gotten in conflict with the police. You know, I'm not aware of the circumstances exactly, but one thing has nothing to do with the other. He did take the video. He took a stand, which other people didn't. And for that, he's my hero. He's the one that conveyed what happened in my son's case. And the DA still failed to indict. And that's what I don't understand. They had a clear video showing exactly what happened. And the other thing they had was two medical examiners' report. One of the medical examiners was a police forensic expert, and they both ruled my son's death a homicide. So w I always understood an indictment was probable cause. Was that not probable cause? And, and Vince, I want to ask you about this latest report today that uh, that uh, from the monitor now of uh, following of New York City police following the stop and frisk settlement that a lot of police are not now documenting their stop and frisk, so there may be actually an under an undercount of what is actually going on. Yes, and um, the Center for Constitutional Rights, as you know, has a stop and frisk case that's been going on for a number of years, and we're in the reform process of that case now. Um, the federal monitor came out with a report, and one of the indications in the report, based upon how uh, what the evidence looks like, is that the police are still not doing as good a job as they could in terms of collecting all of the information so that we will be able to keep the police officers accountable. So we're in a situation now where even when you think about this new executive order and 
you think about um, the work that's happening in this litigation, where now there are a number of places in which we can concretely say that there is outside oversight and outside enforcement to hold the police officers accountable so that we don't have killings of, of other children like, like Ms. Carr's son, and so that uh, African Americans and Latinos and everyone can walk around the streets without fear of being uh, aggressively policed illegally by the police department. As we show the video of uh, your son one more time, uh, Eric Garner being taken down last year, the video that Ramsey Orta took and now has been arrested repeatedly, his wife was arrested, his mother was arrested as yes. well. Um, do you think the outcome would have been different if uh, what Governor, has put, Governor Cuomo has put in place now was in place then? I think the outcome would have been definitely. Did you mean with um, what happened with my son? Right. Whether the officer or officers would have been indicted. Yes. Well, they still weren't indicted. You understand? Because now, in in many of our cases, many of the families' cases, there were plenty of evidence to show that there should have been an indictment. And even a conviction with these police officers, but there wasn't. That's why we say there is a definite problem with the local DAs. And no matter what they say, the records prove some DAs will say, oh, I had a hundred indictments. How many convictions did they have? None. So there's a problem there. Everybody is not always right on either side, and everybody is not always wrong. Vince Warren, is there any possibility in the case of Eric Garner at any level, federal or state now, of there being some kind of indictment? Well, the important thing to remember about this executive order is that it is forward-looking from the date that it's signed. So, unfortunately, um, situations like Eric Garner's case would not be included here, and it would be a forward-looking question, which is why the one year we need to be focused on enforcing and what happens in getting the Congress, excuse me, the legislature to to uh, uh, come up with legislation that mirrors this. Um, but you know, the uh, Eric Garner case, there are a range of things that are actually are happening. So there is a civil lawsuit that is happening. Um, and although it is not a perfect uh, remedy and, and it will not re result necessarily in police officers going to jail, it does bring out all of the evidence that will not have come out publicly uh, because of a lack of trial into the, into the public arena. And it is a measure of holding the police department accountable. I still hold out hope um, and, and expectations that federal and state law enforcement, as information comes out, uh, will act on that. Well, I want to thank you both for being with us. Uh, Gwen Carr, our condolences again on this first anniversary of your son's death. Eric Garner was killed July 17, 2014, when put in a police chokehold and taken to the ground and piled on by a number of police officers saying, I can't breathe, 11 times. Um, and thanks, Vince Warren, for joining us. Vince Warren is the executive director of the Center for Constitutional Rights. This is Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report. When we come back, we'll talk about the latest developments in Greece and in Puerto Rico, and what is the relationship of Governor Andrew Cuomo in New York to what's happening in Puerto Rico today. Stay with us.